everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good day from wherever you're joining. Good to have you here. Welcome to day two of the Zero to Techie induction week. Hello. Let's see. Okay. Can hear me. Let me let's get yes. Thanks for the thumbs up. Yes. So let's see. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to just, you know, take like the next one, two minutes to get our feedback. How are we feeling today? Good morning, Sophie. How are we feeling? Let's just put in QA. How are you feeling? What's your expectation for today? I mean, I could understand yesterday you joined, you had probably zero idea what you were, you know, in for. And now you have like full, you know, so let me see, just put, let me get three people and you know, just to write something quickly. What's your expectation for today? Is the Q and A box today, this is what I'm expecting. Okay, has been interesting so far from Mohammed. else who else okay all right thank you thank you everyone okay Emmanuel is you know he's ready to know more about data engineering okay Topa wants to learn more yesterday was awesome yesterday was insightful we can't wait for today thank you then uh okay I am excited okay someone is saying i don't understand how to use this app it's simple that you can write the q and a you already understand how to use it okay um just very ground rules you do not have access to talk so i mean use the q and a box this is supposed to control i mean we have a number of you on the call if we give everyone access to speak there will be you know too much engagement it'll be distracting so use the q and a chat box and I know it feels like, oh, I can't see what other people are writing. You know, it's just to protect um, distraction. We want you to have a maximum benefit of the program. Not to worry, the organizers can see your questions. They will read it out and, of course, try to answer them. And like I said yesterday, if any of your questions are not being answered, you know, or have not been answered, not to worry. You can ask again and we'll definitely get to it. Okay, so... Don't bother about the fact that you cannot see other people's questions. You can't see what they're writing. That is just to protect, um, you know, try to protect, you know, everyone, allow you to concentrate. Really Realize that, you know, this session today is one hour, 30 minutes in the morning, one hour, 30 minutes in the afternoon. We try to keep the time and, you know, if we try to, like, give everyone access to speak or, you know, have access to comment section, it can distract you. So the platform just supports uh, and encourage you. One final thing before we run to our session this morning. Um, very quickly, I would like to also say that, you know, these, um, for those of us saying, oh, attendance, not to worry. The One of the benefits of this platform, like I said yesterday, it takes your attendance. So do not bother about how would they know if I joined or I did not join. The fact that you joined, he has recorded your details. When you join, like I said, when you join, how long you joined, what time you left, everything. So just join, relax, enjoy it. Everything that is needed um, to get you into the program is available. All right, not to take any more of our time, we'll be going very quickly to our first session this morning from our talent management team. Um, we'll be having um, Tosin and Timilei talk to us about contextual learning with reinforcement. I am very certain that this may not look like, oh, how does this affect me as in the tech space? Why am I learning this? This may not look like your regular tech um, talk, but it's very important for the journey you're about to commence. And um, I hope that, you know, the next few minutes you can get as much benefit from it to, you know, help you in your tech journey. All right, um, Timilai, good morning. Can you hear me? 
Valali, good morning. I can hear you. All right, then. Over to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Yes, we can. Can hear you. Okay. Thank you, Walali. Good morning once again, everyone. I hope you are all doing well today. And um, for everyone here, I hope you have been learning so far. You've been able to get a pin or two since yesterday. I was in yesterday and I learned it, a pin or two. Yes, I actually learned. And I remember Bolanli saying, even if you didn't learn anything, at least you got to know Bolanli's name. All right. So, um, um, in today's session, this morning session, the talent management team will be taking you on contextual learning and reinforcement. So myself, Oluwati Mileni Oladili and um, Oluwato Sin Areoye will be taking you in this session. And I would like you to pay attention. Um, if you have any questions, kindly um, put it down. There will be room for questions at the end of this session. You can use the Q&A so that we can see your questions and it will be attended to at the end of this session. Thank you very much. So um, let's get started. Um, we Today we have some outlines that we'll be speaking to you about. We have the introduction, um, the meaning of contextual learning, reinforcement in theory, um, contextual learning and reinforcement, how does he apply now and um, beyond this program? And when I say beyond this program, how you would be able to use it in real life situations? And then the conclusion. All right, um, let's go to the introduction part. All right, thank you. So um, what would be what we'll be doing with you is um, we'll walk you through on um, how you can develop method for learning from the relevant materials that you would be using, and that would keep you interested in what you are learning. So it's a thing to learn, and it's another thing to be interested in what you are learning. If you are not a tech person before you joined this program, it might seem confusing or um, boring, but we'll be giving you materials and taking you through on how you would get interested and you will gain more knowledge and understand um, what you have been taught and you can be able to apply it in real life settings. All right, um, so so that we can understand what will be um, taking you through in this session, I would like to give a real life example to help you understand this session. And um, so I want you to think of um, any course you took in high school or in the university in, in such a way that um, whenever you attend a lecture, you even feel you get more confused than um, before um, attending the lecture. So for me, um, my own answer, so I want you to think about it, everyone personally. So for me, it was agricultural science um, in high school such that when I attend lectures, um, I seem confused after, um, and I feel that was because we had a farm in my house, which my parents made us engage in it, in planting, um, taking care of chicken in the poultry and the likes. So the most part of it where I remember that I really got confused was when it comes to planting jute leaf, which is um, popularly known as a redo. So you drop um, the seed in a particular part of the um, corner of the farmland. And by the time you come back, you realize that it has spread to every part of the farmland. And I keep wondering, how did the seed jump from this point to that other end? So I get confused in that particular um, area, which is agricultural science. But today in this session, I want you to um, follow us um, through every process that we'll be taking you through, everything we'll be talking about such a way that you would understand and not get confused. So even um, after this session, every other session and the program itself entirely, I want you to follow through so that you would understand better and you would be more interested in what you are about to learn. So thank you. Um, I would like to hand over to Tosin from here so she can um, pick it up from here to the next phase. Thank you. Tosin, are you here? 
Um, okay, and while we wait for um, Tosin's access, um, I think you could just, you know, I think Tosin should have, um, should be able to speak now. I think she's still on okay. this call. Hi, Tosin. Um, Okay, um, okay, maybe you could comment, you know, just comment while Tosin is, you know, continue while Tosin is getting, um, getting settled. Um, okay. So, um, please, um, let's go to the next slide. Thank you. I hope Tosin joins us soon. Okay, so um, when we say um, contextual learning, so um, like I said, I want everyone to pay attention so that um, we can understand. So um, contextual learning is a teaching strategy that allows students to apply their new information and skills to circumstance they would encounter in the real world. So after being taught, given materials on Oh, this is what you're supposed to do. This is how you would do it. Contextual learning is that strategy that would allow you to apply what you have learned into the real life situation. So it is one thing for you to have a knowledge or have a grip of um, what you are being taught and, and even understand because there are situations where you will be taught things and um, you would understand to say, okay, I have an understanding of this. Okay, I think I can do this. But it's another thing to apply that knowledge that you have gotten into the real life situation. So um, let's say as um as an HR, as a talent management, um, talent management person, I decided to pick up a course on hiring and the likes. And I I am I have an assessment, I passed the assessment. It's another thing to be able to apply what I've learned in that hiring program to be able to hire for my organization, to be able to hire the real people, the, the best person that we need for each role in the organization. So that strategy that, um, that you put in place that allows you to be able to face the real life situation, that is what we can call contextual learning. So um, when teachers can convey materials in a way that allows students to create meaning based on their own experience, learning or course. So when um, you are being taught something and you are able to visualize it, put it into, um, you are able to visualize and think of how you can apply it such that when nobody is there, you are still able to get results towards you want to get to your goals, you're able to achieve your goals. So the most recent recent example is the SEAL Academy program. So the SEAL Academy programs, that, that's what we do there, such that that strategy is that we build people to be able to reach their goal. So now you might feel like, okay, I don't know anything in this tech, I'm coming from the financial sector. That is why SEAL Academy is there to help you to put that strategy, even after understanding, you are also able to solve problems and um, reach your goal, become where you want to be, aim at what you want to aim, and also help um, to give solutions to problems. All right, um, the next slide. Please, I would like to know when Tosi is on the call. Bolali. Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Yes, I'll let you know okay. when to join. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, reinforcement. The theory of reinforcement um, fundamental premise is straightforward and obvious. Reinforcement is about the learning optimum behavior in an environment to obtain maximum reward. For example, I will earn more money if I put in more effort today. So reinforcement, just like the word I said, to reinforce something, that means to do over and over again or to put in more, more effort. So 
as you go in um, this program, reinforcement is also very, very important, such that when you have a material to help you understand something, you go over it again, you practice it. If it requires you to do um, to do some Anton, you do it over and over again, such that you are able to get your required results. Like the example I said, if I, I will earn more money if I put in more effort today. So if you are running a business or in your organization, you know that oh, performance evaluation will be done at the end of the month or quarterly, depending on your organization. And if you OK, if I put, put in more effort, I give more results, I'm able to carry out my tax more. I'm able to deliver on my role. There's a big probability that my organization will review my performance and also increase my salary, increase my pay. So that is reinforcement, putting more effort over and over again. I am more inclined to desire to work hard if I have more money. So there are people that um, more money would encourage them to put in more effort. Why there are people that they put in more effort to get more money? So how does that help you? What do you think you need to be able to reinforce? So for, for, for you, I, I feel that to put in more efforts to understand what you have been taught, to get on that track that you are supposed to be, you cannot just um, say, oh, after this program, I just want to start earning in millions. Just like tech people, they feel, okay, once you just know something, you start earning big. So reinforcement in this scenario means putting more efforts putting pushing more yes you might have a nine to five you have other things you're doing but your dedication towards this would help you to achieve more such that you understand more and it will give you your desired results in um, such a situation right. okay okay yeah you said i should tell you when person was on the call so i wanted to you know bring that all right okay let me just finish um this reinforcement then tosin you'll pick it up from there Justin, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. So in such, a, in such a situation, the desired behavior is enabled and supported by the desired outcome of an action, which leads to behavioral reinforcement. So your attitude towards this, this program, what's your attitude towards it? Is it that you're just coming to say, okay, let's see what happens, let's see how it goes, or are you ready to commit yourself such that you gain your desired goals and um, results. Thank you. So Tosi, you can pick it up from here, which is um, the types of reinforcement. Right. Um, thank you very much, Timilei. Uh, apologies for joining late. I've actually been on the call uh, before the webinar started, but I had a bit of technical issues, so it's been resolved now. So good morning, guys, and I hope uh, you guys are doing good. So I'll pick up from where Tim Lane stopped. She, uh, I know she has spoken about contextual learning, and she has already talked about reinforcement, uh, what reinforcement means, what contextual learning means. And I'm sure you can relate from the few examples that um, she has given uh that oh, contextual learning with reinforcement has a lot to do with this internship program so now we'll be talking about uh the types of reinforcement uh we have a few types of reinforcements right according to academics there are a lot various sorts of reinforcements but for the purpose of this uh program for the purpose of seal academy and for the purpose of our discourse today We'll just be talking about two of them. And the first one is the positive reinforcement. And second one is the negative reinforcement. All right, so let's straight to it. And so when we talk about positive reinforcement, what do we mean by positive reinforcement? I think from the word positive, we can um, already know what that means, right? But also, you can also um, call positive reinforcement reward, which is also known as reward. Yes, positive reinforcement is also known as reward. So, something that is positive, something you can also get reward from, 
we can actually put that together to know what positive reinforcement means. So when we talk about positive reinforcement, it actually refers to uh, um, a particular occurrence that has a favorable outcome and such that the the frequency and the intensity of that behavior, right, it gives you uh, a particular outcome that is um, that can be called reward. So uh, let's take, for example, um, work in an organization and you are being given a task and you meet the um, you meet your deadline. You you were given a task to do. You have a deadline to meet. You finished or you completed the task before the deadline assigned. Of course, you'll be rewarded by your manager for that particular act. It's either you're being given a bonus, it's either you you're being given recognition. You know something that would um, encourage you to do better. Something that will help you. Uh, to do better the next time, something that would that you know that oh, when I put in um, more efforts, I would get something better um, out of uh, uh, the efforts that I have uh, that I already put in this particular work. So let's talk about the the benefit of positive reinforcement. There are several benefits of uh, positive reinforcement. Well, we'll be talking about a few, and also because of um, our time. So the first one is that uh, positive reinforcement, it helps you deliver the best performance possible. So you know that the last time you, you uh, met your deadline or you even delivered before the deadline, you're given a bonus. The next time you're being assigned a task to do, because there is this, um, this zeal that would come with you wanting to give it your all because of how you were rewarded the last time, right? You would want to put in your best performance possible, not just delivering early, but also delivering right, you know? You'd want to make the quality of your work better than the last time. So that can also be, um, that can, or that will help you aid uh, your performance. So it will help you to give your best performance possible. Another benefit of positive reinforcement is, is that it helps uh, the change going for a very long time. You know, you've done something right the first time, you've done something better the second time, you will want to give it your best the third time. So the change keeps going for a long period because you know that the next time you are going, uh, it might be um, a promotion. And you know, a promotion will surely come with a raise. You know, you put those things together because you know that effort is being rewarded. But you want to keep changing and improving and improving for a long period of time. And you know that oh, when you put in more effort, there is something that would come out of it. You are not just putting effort for just putting sake. You're putting effort that you know that the reward coming out from it is beneficial to you. And I'll tell you that when you put in so much effort and you know that you are being rewarded for the work that you put in, and you know that for each time you, you put in effort, for each time you do better, there is a better reward. What that would help you with is that it will help you increase, uh, uh, it will help you improve your confidence. Your confidence level will improve. You would be more confident when you're given a task or um, a project to undo because of the previous one you've done. You know, you have the confidence that, oh, you've done something uh, of such before, or even if you've not done something like that before, you can have the confidence that you would be able to um, get to the root of the problem and find a solution to a particular problem that, that uh, is being assigned to you, or a project you know that, oh, you're going to deliver just well. It also helps to improve your confidence. The confidence level will improve over time. So another thing is that um, positive reinforcement, one another benefit is that it, uh, it increases student engagement. We we'll use SEAL Academy as a context here. When you know that you put in efforts the first time, right, and you 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 were able to maybe meet up with one or two of your 
we talked to uh, your 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 colleagues here, your fellow participants. You know that when they, they what they say is that when when you put ads together, you get a better result. It helps improve engagement. You know that okay, we were two that solved this problem together. This person researched on this another. research on this and we're able to have a, a good conclusion and we're able to derive this result and you know that that result if you're being a particular as um task to do you would want to involve more people you'd want to engage more because you know oh the last time that we were uh we, we were given this particular task where the people i spoke to you would know that oh this person is actually good in this particular area i think I should be able to talk to this person. This person will be able to, you know, guide me. This person will also be able to give me a few points that will be able to have to my, you know, you'll be able to pick on other people's to engage with every other person. And by engaging with every every other person, they would also know that you will also be able to give your own contribution and that it will increase your, your engagement. The, 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 the higher the engagement, you know, the better the performance. Right, so we'll be moving to negative reinforcement. Of course, from the word negative, we know that anything that is negative, when something is negative, most likely it is something that is um, not to reckon with. It is something that you should avoid. So negative reinforcement can also be known as punishment. So when you have, uh, when you have, you have a task to, 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 to complete and you keep postponing it, you keep procrastinating or you keep avoiding it because of it being or uh, unfavorable circumstance, of course, that is negative reinforcement. And for every procrastination and every postponement that you do for any work that you're supposed to do, of course, there's, there's a punishment that will come with it. Is it that because you wait right time, you might lose a particular reward that you're supposed to get. So you losing that reward, is actually the punishment for you procrastinating or the punishment for you avoiding what you were supposed to do, right? So uh, in, in the context of the SEAL Academy program, I'd advise you not to uh, not to not to uh, tilt tilt towards the negative reinforcement. I'd advise you to you know take the positive reinforcement, use it and make sure that you you try as much as possible to to engage with every other person and engage with other students so that you can uh, bring your your best, right? So that you can have a better performance in what you're doing. So now let's go into the contextual learning with reinforcement, which is our topic of today. How can, uh, how, let, let's talk about that now. So when we talk about contextual learning with reinforcement, it actually allows us to extend the reinforcement learning setting you know, by talking about the distribution of multiple characteristics and okay properties of the environment, I'll I would use an example. An example is 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 here already that you can see on the screen, but I'll explain it. Uh, for instance, if if a person has, if you've learned a particular policy that enables you to be able to pick a cup, if you have a cup beside you, you can you can actually you demonstrate what I'm trying to um about and or you can imagine doing it now you have a particular you have a cup you have a particular policy of picking up your cup right certain way you know this is how you do it that's using reinforcement learning there is one way to determine how to generalize that policy and when i say generalize that policy so let's not just say just the cup you are picking alone. Examine how you can pick up different cups that cups of different sizes of different shape. It might not just be a cup; it might be an object. You know, picking it up uh, in a, 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 a something that has similar characteristics of or similar uh, physical properties with um, a cup it can be a plate, right? You can pick it up right in a similar way 
so you can use that now just imagine it if you don't have a cup beside you and if you have a cup beside you you can just do that to see how you can relate with the example i just gave now so that is an example of contextual learning with reinforcement you have been able to um extend the reinforcement learning and um setting uh, uh talking about the distributions of multiple characteristics of uh and properties of, of the environment so that we can say is contextual learning with reinforcement so how does it apply now how does it apply so you'll be able to uh, better transfer and apply that knowledge in the real world now in seal academy uh it's a place that you'll be learning in the context in which you'll be able to use the new knowledge you'll be gaining the new skills you'll be acquiring you'll be able to relate it you'll be able to um apply it in the real world setting so you you'll be more um likely to understand how the knowledge you you you've acquired the knowledge you'll be acquiring during the learning experience you'll be able to um relate it or you'll be able to it will be relevant for you in your current role and if you're not in a in, in a particular role that uh, that is close to maybe tech or anything maybe you're in the uh, uh can i say marketing or sales and it's a role that is not techy let us just put it that way but if you are in a techy role that are, that is related to what you're learning here, right? It will be very relevant for you. It will be relevant for you in that role. And for the role that those that are actually changing career now, you, you want to be a cloud engineer, you want to be a data engineer, you want to be a product manager, you will be able to uh, use the experience, the learning yeah, experience. Sir. You'll be able to use it in that role all right so let's talk about beyond the internship program now you you've done the intern let's let's just say you you've gone through the internship program you've done the six months from zero to techie and you've learned a lot now how does it go beyond the internship program so when when um in this learning framework you'll be able to draw context in the real world task real world um, situations and the problems. So the learning and assessments can um, authentically reflect your everyday experiences. I'm sure you'll be able to, you, you'll be expected to transfer the knowledge, the skills that you've acquired in a professional context, which is going to be beyond SEAL Academy, where you're in a professional, um, when, when, when you're now a professional data engineer or a professional cloud engineer, you'll be able to, authentically use the the learning and the assessments you know it will, it will reflect in uh the work you're doing it will reflect in your profession so also our training and certification programs they go beyond the realm of the classroom they also include the practical experience so you it's not just going to be uh the lms alone it's not just going to be you learning um the courses that that you that you have in the classroom and, and all that it will go beyond that you also be able to it will also include practical experience so you'll be able to relate better which is uh uh contextual learning with reinforcement so to help you as a participant to prepare and compete in a uh, worldwide skill by you learning with uh, you learning and being able to relate it with the real world setting, of course, you'll be able to um, uh, uh, compete in the real, in the worldwide scale. So um, let Timilein conclude with uh, our topic, which is contextual learning with reinforcements. I hope um, you've been able to learn one or two things from everything I've explained. Don't worry. If you have questions, just put it in the Q&A session and we'll do justice to it after the presentation. All right, Timelaine. All to right, you? before um, before Timelaine commences, I want to say a big thank you to the talent management team. Um, thank you to Tosin. I can see a lot of questions here. Not to worry. 
um, because of our time, okay, Tim Lenny will wrap up the session very quickly, but the questions will be answered um, in the um, Q&A uh, section and we'll all get to see the reply to the questions. And at the end of today's session, we'll take you know general questions. So if you still have questions that you want to be answered, not to worry, later today we'll definitely, you know, answer those questions. So yeah, Timlai, over to you very quickly so we can move to our next um, session. Thank you so much, Tosin. Thank you, Balani. So um, going to the conclusion, um, what is expected of you? So what we expect of you is to allow yourself to enjoy the teaching in relatable scenarios in your daily life while employing contextual learning with reinforcement. So as you go through um, this um, teachings, the program, make sure that you are able to relate it to something around you to give you better understanding. You can ingest pos positive reinforcement by celebrating your small wins and you can ingest negative reinforcement by getting rid of anything that can prevent you from attaining your goals. So I'll say to you, go after your goals so you can celebrate your wins. We are rooting for you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Be home. Thank you. Thank you so much to the talent management team. Thank you, Tim Lane. Thank you, Tosin. I believe that has been a very engaging session, you know, trying to, you know, use positive uh, reinforcement to, you know, celebrate your small wins. There was a question in the comment section on, you know, another example of contextual learning. I think the conclusion you know, did that, talking about, you know, making it relatable to your real life experience, employing, you know, contextual learning, trying to ensure that what you're learning, you know, it's practical, practicable to you, breaking your small wins, and of course, getting rid of things that will distract you um, while you continue or commence this journey. Thank you so much to Talent Management Team. Very quickly, we'll be moving to the next session of today. Um, Leo, are you on the call with us? Yeah, I'm here. All right. All right. We'll be moving to um, assignments, use cases, and uh, projects and teams. All right, Leo, over to you. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session. We'll be talking about assignments, use cases, projects, and teams, like Bolandi said. My name is Leo Ojibo, a part of the SEAL team. So we'll start by looking at the diagram here yeah this is how the project the program is supposed to run for the zero to techie program you have um, multiple modules which you would have to go through and be successful at each each module is made up of courses uh, the course content and then your scenario based projects and assignments now the project and assignments are made specifically to make sure you, you, you get a grasp of everything you're being taught. So it is very important that you attempt and you get them done. Okay, so the project assignments are very important and they also add to the, the success of the program for you. Besides the assignments and the projects, the major part of the course content is also there. It's also divided further into two parts. You have your interactive slides with the resource links and your course quizzes. The course quizzes is pretty obvious. Uh, it means at the end of every course, you take your quiz, which will serve as a test of the knowledge you've gained through the course. So it is important you go through the course contents and prepare for the quizzes so you can you can be successful and move on to the next module. Interactive slides, resource links, these are the main course materials that you have to go through to get the knowledge that's required to attend the quizzes. Now, every link, every resource link that you see on the slides extremely important. I will advise you do not skip any of them. Okay, you have to go through the entire course content in those slides and be sure to digest them properly. Because this would um, 
meaning you actually go from zero to techie. These things were tailored to probably take you from the, you know, no knowledge to the techie point. So if you kind of skip some of these um, slides or course content, you probably jump from zero to somewhere mid level. You might not really go through the entire process. And the aim of this program is to get all of you who are here now from zero to techie. So it is extremely important that you follow through every course material. Because getting to the end depends on how you're able to tackle each module. Okay. Now we'll talk about teamwork. What is teamwork? Teamwork is the ability to work together with people to achieve a common purpose or a common goal. The advantages, you see them on your screen already. Teamwork can keep you motivated. In what sense? If you decide to take this program on your own, there are some points you get to where you meet some roadblocks, some really tough topics, and you might just lose it. And you want to stop at that point. Okay? But when you are together as a team, the next person can push you to continue and tell you, oh, we can get this done. Now, that's a, a way to keep you motivated at that point in time where the morale is low. Because trust me, that times the morale will actually be low. So you need a team to stay strong and keep moving. Accountability. If you work as a team and person A has to deliver something, and person B has to do something else, and person C has to do something else, and each of you have to you know, bring your solutions together to make one functional solution. And of course, there's accountability because everyone has to check on everyone to be sure they are doing their work right. So that's another advantage of teamwork, accountability. Networking beyond the now or beyond the present. It means you are able to you know, make new friends, new colleagues, you know, even after the program, you can still connect and get work done together and stuff. More like building your community of friends. Then communication means is another advantage of teamwork, which means you are able to, you know, mix up and share ideas, talk to each other. Uh, it usually takes more than you know one person to to get stuff done properly or to learn fast enough. For instance, if you have to tackle some really annoying topics on your own, it might take you really long to catch it. But in that team, you might have some people who are really good at something that you're not good at. Now, when you guys communicate together, you're able to get solutions faster and also help you as a person to grow your knowledge in that very area and regards. So it is also very important to communicate, which makes teamwork really important too, as part of the SEAL program. It also helps you provide feedback recognize achievements. If you work as a team, it's easy to provide feedback to someone else's work. And they are also able to tell you how you have performed. And this would also help you grow as opposed to working alone. If you work alone, you do stuff and uh, you get it done. No one really tells you how you how you you fared or what you could have done better. So you see the importance of having an entire team working together. Now, we have team formation guides. And one of them is interest. That is the learning part. What am I interested in? What is the next person interested in? For instance, we all, we all kind of um, are into the uh, data science part, for instance, or data engineering part. We could make a team out of that for data engineers. 
for cloud engineers, make a team for cloud engineers. Okay, so that's a, like a team formation guide based on your interests or your learning parts. It could also be based on motivation. Based on motivation. Now, that's basically how motivated are you? Okay, you find like minds who are ginger about doing stuff, getting stuff done, you know, immediately. You, you, you find those people and you want to come together as a team and, and you know, quickly get stuff done, you know, take study classes together, learn more, learn faster. That's also a way to form your teams, which is also very good. Besides that, we also have time zone difference. Now, all of you are probably taking the courses for the, the, the course from various parts of the world. Okay. So if I want to pick people in your time zone and make a team out of it, because I might be at a GMT and someone is at GMT plus five, right? It would only make sense if the GMT plus fives, you know, pick themselves and they have to say, okay, let's meet at 8 p.m. And it's 8 p.m. as opposed to me trying to join them and, and they'll say 8 p.m. And my own 8 p.m. is like way, you know, clashing with something else. So time zone difference is also a way to pick the teams. And then we'll have communication channels, which could be, you know, whatever. We have um, Slack, we have WhatsApp, Telegram, whatever. Okay, whatever channels that, you know, you have uh, a common ground could be a way to, to make up your teams and meet in a certain way. And of course, we also have conversation status. Uh, that's basically uh, really straightforward. You can just say, for instance, um, you see someone who you think has an interest in um, VPCs, you know, and be like, oh yeah, uh, I, I took the VPC class at the end, da, 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 you know, would you like to connect Let's you know work together as a team, you know, and be accountable to each other, basically. So that that can also be a way to form your teams, because trust me, we need to be accountable to someone or, or some process to be successful, especially in this part. Okay, if you're accountable to someone, you're gonna grow faster. So please, it's important to work as teams is extremely important so um even the the, the previous um, speakers talked about it you know reinforcement you know you keep mingling people and you keep reinforcing the, the the knowledge you're gaining from the program and that should help you to scale successfully through the entire program and uh we wish you the best on this part of this journey from zero to techie and we hope that you'll scale through and become uh, techies at the end of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Leo. Thank you very much for that um, presentation. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me see if we have questions running through. Okay, so we have some questions. Um, I'll just pick some of them. Someone says, uh, how do I find a like mind in you know this online mode? Um, Leo, can you hear me? Yeah. How do you find a like mind? In yes, an online, mode? online mode, yes. <laughs> well, um, I would say you would have to make some research, you know, uh, and sometimes you only need to speak once with some people to to know if they, they would align with you. Okay. You can have a chat randomly with with as many people as you have in, in the same learning path, for instance, right? And then you streamline that down into those that are really motivated enough. Not everyone's going motivated, even in your learning path. Okay, so you'd have to really be um particular you know try to look for those that you know that would really be motivated enough to to flow with you because sometimes when you you know if you don't if you're not careful enough you might hook up with some people who are going to 
slow you down or pull you down. Okay. But I want to believe everyone here is motivated enough. That's why we're here. And we want to be techies at the end of the day. So, yeah. All right. Thank you very much for that. Um, okay. Another question is what if you are one person on that region? How will you work? You know, teamwork if you are in a separate region and maybe others are in another region? Okay. I mean, I, I think in a scenario like that, you, you would have to make sacrifices because you are the only one in that region. So but you still have to mix up with. And trust me, you can be the only one, you can even be five in that region, but like minds are in other regions. So you have to weigh the pros and cons. Okay. I know which is uh, more important for you. Because, I mean, I can be in a region with someone who I don't feel is motivated enough you know, to flow with me. And someone in another region, you know, kind of like is more motivated. And I think I'm pushing me kind of accountable to that person. I'd rather go for the one in the other region, right? So it depends on what you're looking for. Okay. All right, let's just take one more question. Oh, we have more than one. <laughs> um, you talk about working as a team. Please, how do we connect with a co-attendant of this course as this hub? Okay. Um, I think the answer to that is this hub does not give us access to even see or interact. Well, that's why you have the Slack channel. You are in a Slack channel. I mean, we see people saying, hello, hi, my name is this, I'm from here. That's how you connect with people. You see people connect. As you commence the program, you know, you would have a community of people. Like I said, this particular channel is focused on ensuring that you focus on the things that are being communicated from the platform. We do not want any form of distraction for you. We don't want you to, um, you know, get distracted. We don't want you to... Um, you know, do anything of that regard. So um, we want you to focus on what is being taught. So that's why. But you have a Slack channel to, you know, build a community. Okay, so um, thank you so much, Leo. Um, I, I believe the next presentation would answer some of the questions here. So I will just go straight to the second, the last presentation for the morning so as to allow us to, um, you know, I believe you'll answer some of your questions. All right, good morning once again. I will be handling this section on accountability partner selection. This morning session is not, you know, your regular techie program or, okay, we're not talking tech, we're not talking cloud or data. We're basically talking about all the things you need to survive, you know, in a training journey like this. You know, the talent management team spoke on contextual learning reinforcement. You know, we had assignment things, you know, use cases and projects. And right now I'll be going into a quick section of accountability partner selection. I'll be doing a lot more of Q&A than talking, you know, in the next few minutes. So please use the chat box um, as much as possible. And I'll be looking through it to ensure that, you know, all your questions are being answered as much as possible. Okay, so let's go to the first slide. Now, I want to, uh, um, I'll probably just take a few people um, asking this question. So what comes to your mind when you hear accountability partner? That's what we want to talk about for the next few minutes. So when you hear accountability partner, what comes to your mind? So use the Q&A chat box to, you know, answer that. What comes to your mind? Waiting for our responses. What comes to your mind? You see accountability partner. Okay, someone says... um. A person you can report to and get corrections without feeling bad. Okay. Um, someone we both look after each other, reading results on a challenge at hand, someone that you can both hold each other accountable, someone who keeps you on your toes, a partner that does does his own fair shell of the project, someone who keeps okay, okay, someone who will be respond you'll be responsible to, someone who would always want to hear your inputs. Iron sharpening another iron. Okay, someone that can help you monitor your progress. So, so many, you know, feedback. Okay, so it's obviously not a new topic. Okay, and I will just go through, you know, foundation um, very quickly. And I believe we're all on track. Okay, I believe we're all on track. Um, I should quickly say this for those of us raising our hands, we can just use the Q and A box. Um, there's no need to raise your hand. Okay, so the next um, slide. 
Now, we've said so many things on, you know, who an accountability partner is, right? And we're all correct. We're all very, very correct on, you know, who an accountability partner is to us, who we think an accountability partner should be. Now, for the purpose of this um, induction program, we'll be looking at um, a very simple definition, okay? Someone, something, you know, that supports another person, you know, that keeps, you know, keeps you committed, that maintains your progress or desired goal. Okay, so like what everyone says, someone that you can relate to, solve a problem, everything. But one thing we should know is, you do know that you could have physical and virtual support. You know, so the, you know, we can have two types of accountability partners. We can have human accountability partners and non-human accountability partners. Now, looking at human accountability partners, you'd see that, um, you'd see that we can have physical support and virtual support. So someone is saying oh, when an online community, like a question someone asked earlier, when an online community, how are we going to manage such support? Accountability partner doesn't have to be someone that, you know, you have to be physically present um, in the same location. Oh, if I can't see this person, I cannot work that way. With the global village, I mean, the pandemic also, you know, in 2020 brought about a lot of virtual working. We're having this kind of engagement virtually. And you have seen that a lot of people have benefited from this program as, you know, hopefully you would. So it shows that, you know, your support can be physical. You know, it could be human it, um, it, and it could be virtual. You know, it could be your colleagues via different social media platforms or connectivity platforms like um, you rightly um, told us earlier. Okay, we could also have non-human supports such as online tools, AI algorithms, you know different kind of um, support so it doesn't even have to be human how on earth how would you keep yourself grounded the idea of accountability is support something or someone that meant that allows you to stay grounded so if you say oh i can't find someone who can help me um to do something i could use non-human it doesn't have to be human okay how on, how can i ground myself am i going to use a timer am i going to so some people let me use this example um, those who, um, you know, so some of us that, you know, try to, you know, watch your weight, trying to live healthy. I have a friend who likes to take um, a very big bottle of water. I don't know if we know this very big um, seven liter jar that did this thing. And she has a timer on her phone. And every time that timer rings, she takes water. Every time the, the timer, you know, she sets the alarm. Every time the alarm rings, she takes water. Now, Having that kind of non, that's a non-human accountability system that allows her stays committed to her desire to, you know, live more healthy and take more water. Now, that is an accountability partner. Now, it looks like, oh, it's not human. How is that accountable? But that allows her to stay in track, to keep, you know, maintain her progress. To say, I want to take seven liters of water a day. If I can take um, maybe 50 CL every one hour, I would achieve my goal before the end of the day. So she sets an alarm that every 30 minutes or every hour, the alarm rings and then she takes a bottle of water. She takes water. Now that is one of the ways, you know, to be accountable. Next slide. Now, there are things to know before engaging with your accountability partner. You know, before you even decide what kind of accountability partner do I need? Do I need human or can I have non-human? Should it, you know, would it be physical support? Would it be non-physical? Would I use, you know, what tools would I use to stay accountable to this goal that I, you know, I've decided? The first question is what are your goals? Now understanding that your goals are changing, you know, your goals for goals at different points are changing. Now the question now for the purpose of this um training, what are your goals? Do you just want to come and say, I just want to learn introduction and I'm good. If I could make it through module one and understand all the basics, I don't have to be a part of the program. I'm good to go. If that's your goal, then you know the accountability system you need. If your goal is to, you know, make it to the end, get, um, you know, get started, learn coding, do this, you know the kind of system that you need. So the first question I'd ask everyone, you know, to ask yourself, internalize this question. What are your goals for this um program when you started you probably weren't aware of what it's about but throughout yesterday we had various people talk to us about you know what the program is about how long it's going to take you know cost implication the fact that it's free for those of us asking every time how much am i paying it's very free 
So I don't have to pay any money. I have to take a certification at some point. I have to learn. I've done this. So these are the goals. You set goals for yourself. What goals then? Then what time commitment are you willing to make? How long are you willing to commit to this? Someone asked the question yesterday saying, oh, I have I, uh, I have uh, 8 to 5 uh, job, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So how am I going to be able to manage this? You understand, like I said something yesterday, you understand your time better than anybody else. So you tell yourself, I'm going to dedicate, I'm going to start my, uh, my, uh, my 9 to 5 at 9 a.m., close by 5 p.m. It takes me roughly 30 minutes to get back to my house settle down, have dinner. By 7 p.m., I will have enough time. So from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. every day, I will dedicate three hours of my time to this program. And then every weekend, I will dedicate five to six hours to ensure that I make up for it. The question is, what time commitment are you willing to make? Now, if your time with your time commitment, it allows you to decide what kind of accountability partner you can have. Leo said something earlier about, you know, people in different time zones. So if your time commitment allows you to be um, available between the hours of, let's say, 8 p.m. Nigerian time to 11 p.m. Nigerian time, and then you go with someone who has the same 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., but the person is in Canada, it's obvious that, you know, you would not be able to work together. So understanding the time commitment you have would also allow you to decide what accountability partners you can, um, structure you can have. Also, you know, you check in, you know, what is your check-in frequency? Do I want an accountability partner that because of our schedule, we only have conversations, we can, okay, how much have you gone? Uh, what have you done? I currently, you know, reside in Lagos, Nigeria, and I have an accountability partner in the US. Okay, so we have a six-hour time difference. So it allows us not checking as much. We probably do like a monthly check-in. And so we decide, okay, we'll use weekends because by the time it's about 6 p.m. Nigerian time, it's about 12 noon. Um, you know, over there. So we just central, you know, central Eastern time. And then we have that balance. So we probably have like a monthly check-in, you know, one weekend in the month where we say, okay, this is what we're trying to achieve for this month. How far have we come? This is our step. So what is your check-in frequency as well? So these are the things, you know, that would also help you. Oh, can you hear me? Um, I don't know if anyone can hear me. Sabella says, I cannot hear anything. Can anybody else hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so I think um, it's Sabella's network. Oh, we can. Okay, thank you. Let's see if uh, Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay, so it's probably Sabella's network. All right. Um, another thing you need to know before engaging with your accountability partners is, are you prepared to be a coach in exchange for coaching? So some people want an accountability partner. You know, if you see some of our explanations, you just say somebody I'm accountable to, someone I can, you know, rely on, I can support. Are you willing to also support this person if it's going to be a person? You know, if I'm not willing to give it, the person, offer anything to that person, maybe I'll just use non-human, you know, like the alarm clock system. All it has to do is ring and I go and take my water. I'm not offering it anything. However, if I want someone that we can lean on each other, you know, then I look at the human factor. So am I willing to be uh, a coach in exchange for some coaching? Am I willing to bring in what I have, you know, on board that we can exchange ideas? Am I willing to not just come into a session where the person just pours into me like a teacher, you know, explains everything and I leave? Am I willing to say, okay, I've learned this as well. Let's exchange ideas. Let's build ourselves. Now, deciding what you want to do. Now, I'm not saying that, oh, I mean, if you're not willing to exchange, you know, coach in exchange, you already know what accountability system works for you. But if you're willing to have that exchange system, then you also know what it works. Now, another question is, do you require human intervention or would an uh, algorithm work for you? Now, like I said earlier, we have human and non-human accountability partnership. So if you believe that, see, I don't think that alarm clock can work for me. I can't be accountable to any form of AI system that would monitor my progress or that would set, you know, some sort of reminders for me. It won't work. I'll probably not. I need someone that, you know, is going to be human. I need someone I can talk to and talk back to me, you know, things like that. Then you know what you need. Some people are diligent enough. You know, some people can sit in their house and um, let's still use the exercise system um, as an uh, example. Some people can you know, get, um, start an exercise themselves, just wake up in the morning or in the evening, have a routine and stick to it. Some people require to go to the gym because they want that community of people that they can see. Some people, 
um, also prefer to use, you know, online platforms, something that they can follow through. So you understand yourself better, right? Would you also prefer an accountability partner that is a stranger, a family, friend, colleagues? What works best for you? Now, you should also know that your accountability partner doesn't even have to be part of the system. It can be a member of your family that, you know, comes to check up on you and see how is this program going, you know, have a conversation with you. What are the tools you need? So you can say, I'm not very, so someone asking, well, how can I build teams with people I don't even know, this online system? I need people physically, right? You don't even need people in the program to keep you accountable. If you need people, if you want people in the program as well, you know, ask yourself, what do I need? I prefer a friend, someone that knows me. I don't want someone that knows me too much over familiarity. I want someone that is, you know, that has a bit of distance between us. Now, these are the things you need to note, you know, when you want to engage and decide on your accountability partnership system. Next slide. Now, looking at all those factors, have, when you've answered those factors, right, when you've, you know, ticked all the boxes, this is what I want, this is not what I want, then you now look at the qualities. Now, I've decided all the things I want, okay? Now, as an accountability partner, what are the qualities that I need? Okay, as someone that needs to be accountable to someone as well, a need for, you, what are the qualities that I need? Well, there are three key qualities. One is commitment. Whether you have uh, an AI accountability partner system, whether you have a human system virtually or physically, commitment has to be on you. You have to be fully committed to your goals and the entire process. Like I mentioned, um, the friend of mine who, has, um, who uses um, a big jar of water you know, every, um, you know, periodically, who takes water periodically. Now, that friend of mine, you know, she has to be committed to the process. That, oh, the alarm rings that she just loses it. No, she has to always have water available, you know, fill it up every morning and then every time take it in. So that commitment process to what am I trying to achieve at the end of, she wants to achieve seven liters or six liters. Honestly, I don't know the figure of water per day right and this is how she's going to do it. so you have to be committed and what is the process the process is every hour she takes this um, amount of water so there are milestones there are key things there are processes that has to be followed to get to the goal you have to be fully committed to this the question is having checked all the boxes fixed all the boxes all the things you want in accountability partner if you are not committed to that partnership system then it's not going to work for you Another thing, you know, another good quality is a cheerleader. Okay, you need an accountability partner that cheers for you, roots for you, enjoys your success. Okay, yes, you're like, yes, at this point, how would the AI system work? Yeah, AI systems actually, you know, will work for you. I say, oh, well done. Um, keep it up. There are, you know, different learning tools that allows you to, um, that gives you a some sort of badge, um, you know, sparkles and all that when you complete your learning streak for, you know, the period. Okay, so even for a physical partner, for some of us, you know, they say your love language is probably a word of affirmation. So you want someone that will say, well done, keep the work going. You want someone that, you know, when you do something, acknowledges it. Okay, so if that, you know, those qualities, and even you could do it to yourself every time you reward yourself. You know, we, earlier we spoke about reinforcement, um, with po um, you know, positive reinforcement in with con uh, contextual learning. So talking about, you know, cheering yourself on as well. You know, not beating yourself up, saying, oh, I didn't get it now. Oh, maybe I will just sit down. No, you actually need to, you know, share, share for yourself, you know, share your accountability partner up and, you know, share each other up. Uh, another quality is drill sergeants. You don't want a partner who would always accept your excuses. Um, Today, I'm not feeling too good. I'm not in the mood this morning. You know, you know, the truth is getting up every day to, you know, do something you want to do is not going to be easy. You need that, an accountability partner that's your neurosurgeon that says, no, your excuses are not, you're not, you're not, you're not going to have excuses. There's this phrase I tell myself a lot that I learned uh, a while back when I was um, in my undergraduate days. You know, there are two types of people in this world, um, people who make excuses and people who give results. You can either be one of both. It's either you give me results or you give excuses. There's always a thousand and one reasons why you cannot do what you're doing or why you cannot achieve your goal. Oh, um, I wasn't feeling too great today. Oh, I was a bit sad. Um, my, there was pa bad power supply. Um, my laptop was dead. Uh, I didn't get enough laptop. Um, I didn't know ahead of time. So I could give you 10,000 reasons why you would probably not even go through the program. And the same 10,000 reasons, another person will have it and will still pull through. 
So you need an accountability partner that would not say, okay, sorry, you're not, you're having a headache today, I can't sleep. No, you need someone that would walk you through it, regardless of your excuses, regardless of the reasons you want to give yourself, to always allow you to show up every day, regardless of the, you know, the challenges you're going through. Because the truth is, you know, you heard it from the current students, it is not going to be easy. It's not a, a hand-holding process that says, oh, just sorry, I go, out, go to bed. You have to keep up the work. Always show up for yourself. I need someone that will assist you through showing up. So there are different examples of, you know, accountability partner system. Having said all this, having spoken of all the types of accountability partnership, the qualities, you know, you could, I think at this point, I want us to think about it, you know, very briefly. I'll be running through the comment session. Okay. I want you to think about it. The question is, at this point, who comes to your mind? What kind of account, what kind of candidates? I mean, everything I've said, the kind of things, the kind of qualities that are required, what kind of accountability partner do you think is suitable for you? Do you think it's a friend? Do you think it's a family? Do you think it's maybe a co-worker, a colleague? Or do you think it's you know somebody from the online community? You think, oh, I think I'm gonna find an accountability partner from the Slack channel. Let's let me hear, let me see your um comments. Let me hear, let me let me get a few comments. At this point, with everything I've said. What kind of accountability partner do you think is suitable for you at this point? Okay, so Pritchie says she has, is a friend and she has found one already. That's very good. Congratulations. It's a very important step in the community. Okay, let's let's get more. Let me see. Okay, okay. Kagiso says online or local community. That's the choice for him in this um, journey. Okay, someone from the Slack community to Grace says a friend. Okay. Let's keep it going. I'll prefer an accountability partner from the online community. Someone says online community. From my experience with ALX, I would like a stranger. Okay. Someone says a colleague partner. Someone says online. Okay. A friend from the online community. Someone from online community. Okay. So you can see a lot of online community people, right? The people here that are, you know, willing to take that journey with you. And I mean, whoever, whichever one, you know, suits you, Muiwa says, for me, it will be my friends because a lot of us are determined to develop ourselves in our field. So there'll be a lot of motivation from them, which is important, trying to develop yourself. Okay, the next slide. Now, having thought about the kind of um, community you want. So when you're selecting and working with an accountability partner, there's some things you need to know, right? We have all thought about it. We want our friend, we want this. It's very important to know these four things as you select and work with your accountability partner. First of all, find someone you share similar ideas and, you know, goals with. Okay, this, you know, I, um, backs up on what you said. You know, he says he has a group of friends that, you know, the focus is to develop themselves. You know, one of you cannot be focused on growing in your career and the other one just wants to play and just live the life. I'm not saying living the life is wrong. I'm saying, you know, know your goals per time. Okay, if you share the same ideas, at this point in our life, we want to develop each other. You know, he allows you to be able to work together. So find someone that shares your ideas, not someone that, you know, just wants to complain about the system, wants to keep making excuses, wants to have, you know, reasons to not develop themselves. Find someone that shares your ideas and your goals, you know, shares, you know, the same ideas with you. Secondly, you create a plan. Okay. At the end of the day, you can call yourself accountability partners, but what is your plan? You have a goal. So how are we going to achieve this goal? Are we going to be meeting every week? Is it going to be a meeting? Is it going to be a check-in? Okay, there are ways to do it. Some people can say, okay, the plan, like I gave example of the water. The plan is, the goal is to achieve um, maybe seven liters of water at the end of the day. What is the plan? The plan is, I will take one liter every hour from the hours of 12 to 7 p.m. Okay. Now, at that part of 12 to 7 p.m., how do I get accountable to this person or this uh, AI? So I'm going to get my alarm to ring. You know, the alarm rings. I take the water. So you have to have a plan. You know, when you don't have a plan, I mean, this um, saying is very popular. If you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. Okay, so you can have an accountability partner, but it would not be efficient. It won't be effective without an actual plan. So you need to create a plan. Then also, you need to be open and honest with yourself and your partner. So imagine someone from the online community and you guys are going through, you know, um, you know, certain conversations and you realize that, oh, this person has um, already knows how to write some codes in Python. I'm still, you know, struggling with it, but I don't want the person to feel like I don't know anything. So I'm like, oh, yes, I, I did two hours yesterday. 
we agreed we'll be doing two hours every day. And so the person says, oh, I did three hours yesterday. I was able to um, go past one hour. And you're like, ah, I don't want this person to make to feel like I'm not doing well. So you're, you're a bit, you, you take it into yourself and say, well, I did two hours, but you didn't do two hours. You probably weren't even able to do, you know, any hours because, you know, you were not able to do it or you were struggling at some point. You need to be open and honest with each other. You need to have a partner that you can be open with. Oh, I'm struggling at this point. Okay. I'm not saying, oh, have a partner that you share all your life. I'm not saying, oh, the accountability partner has to be someone you share your life problems with or anything. No, I'm saying on this journey, on the goals you both set, on the plan, you need to be open and honest with that person. Oh, this is what I'm going through. I cannot, the person is supposed to support. I mean, we said it earlier, support you, you know, help you maintain progression. However, if you're not open and honest, you cannot support each other truthfully. And finally, reward yourself. Okay, this, this backs up the reinforcement conversation earlier, talking about positive reinforcement. For your little win, celebrate yourself. A lot of us, you know, you we get carried away with people around us. It's important that we are all, we understand that we all have different journeys on different parts. We have different learning systems, which means that Mr. A may get to point B in two minutes. And you, as Mr. C, may get to point B in 30, 30 minutes. Rather than beat yourself up and say, oh, why am I, why am I celebrating? My, my mates did it in two minutes. Nope. You did get to your destination. It just took you a bit longer, which is fine. It's your journey. Remember to reward yourself. Celebrate yourselves. You know, we said that earlier. Talk about, you know, cheering each other on. Okay. Getting to that point where at every milestone, you're able to do this. Celebrate yourself. Reward yourself. Do not beat yourself up. Do not drag yourself down. Always motivate yourself to keep going, you know, for yeah, for um the goal. And I should add this for all of us who are choosing online community, that's a good um, it's a good um plan. However, it's also important to understand that, you know, being that an online community, you're all different with different personalities, different understanding. It's important that you don't overshare. I understand that people meet on social media platforms and become lifelong friends and best friends and all, but it's also important you protect um, your identity, protect your data, protect things that are personal to you. Um, this is just um, an advice, basically. At Till Academy, I mean, we open, I mean, just the same way you registered, a lot of people have registered. So, I mean, it's a general learning platform. Please ensure that, you know, you do not um, put yourself in harm's way in any form. Okay, focus on the goal, stick to the plan. Do not go outside of your plan. Do not spend time, you know, unnecessarily outside your plan. Grow on that um, platform. And of course, like we um, say, data privacy, it's important to keep your data to yourself. All right, that being said, that will be the wrap up of my session. I wanted to make this very quick so that we can have enough time to answer questions, both from um, the first session the second session and this one so in the next few minutes we'll be taking questions answer all the questions from um the morning session for the morning session before we wrap up all right the first question says i'm joshua is there a practical guide to choosing an accountability partner online in a community like this should i just reach out to anyone um i there's no practical guide what works for you may not work for another person. Basically, I think I ran through all the practical guys. What are the things you need to know, the qualities you need to um, you know, choose, and of course, deciding what works for you. So when you have by yourself or individually, set your own goals, right? Set your plans. When you when the program starts, right? When the program starts, um, the Slack channel you currently are on, which is the called six applicants Slack channel, will be dissolved because you're no longer applicants. For those of you who make it through the program, you become part of the first module. And so you would see your um, classmates. And uh, along the line, you would see people, you would engage with people. You come, you could start by coming online generally and saying, oh, hello, I'm having this challenge. I was not able to do this. Somehow people build network. Personally, I have seen, you know, people who come on the social media, um, come on the Slack channel, you know, drop their challenges. Someone picks it up, answers them. You know, they start a conversation, go into each other's private DMs and start a conversation. They realize, oh, we have good um, reports. You seem to have solutions to this problem. I have solutions to this problem. Let's resolve it. Okay. So there's no practical way. There are different ways to meet. We'll also have instructor-led session and people answer questions. So this person answered, like, can I talk to you afterwards? Oh, no, this person is having this challenge. Can I help the person? You know, we did mention, are you ready to also coach in return? Okay, it's not just, oh, I'm waiting for someone that knows something. If this person, this person is asking questions, person doesn't know anything. No, 
okay i can also help this person you learn also by you know teaching others you learn more you know when you communicate when you talk about it so you can also do that so there's no practical guide just pay attention to your community set your goals and then you find someone who works with you okay uh, alima says how many hours of the week does the program require i would say that this is um a blend of self-paced and instructor-led program so for your first two three modules it will be more self-paced and instructor-led so you'll be giving um maybe a few weeks to take some certain courses okay so you will now decide in that few weeks like i said earlier you decide that oh this time um for example this is just an hypothetical situation you're giving three weeks for your first module and maybe your first module has five courses maybe each of this course has like 100 hours or 500 hours hypothetically so don't get scared yet so saying i have 500 hours to complete in three weeks how many hours do i need per day i need xyz number of hours per day or maybe i could put in more hours in the weekend then you plan your time what suits you so for someone like me i'm a morning person you know if i have to be a part of this kind of program i'll probably wake up as early as 4 a.m to you know spend two three hours before i start my day some people will prefer to do it later in the evening when they're back. Some people do it in the afternoon. You know the time that suits you. Okay, so just decide that you're going to put in as much work as possible that's required. And of course, a lot of your weekends or public holidays will go into this because for what it, for, for someone who works nine to five, whatever time you cannot make up during the week, you try to make it up during the weekend. And then as the program gets more intensive, you need to do a lot of practical session, you know, a lot of handholding, instructor-led session. They are very flexible. Um, to be honest. So I cannot give you an ex an accurate um exact um hour that will be required. The hours you need for each of the session will be determined by you know your learning progress, how fast you're able to learn or acquire information. Like I said, someone can take three minutes to learn, you know, something and another person can take three hours. Okay, we have different learning paces, but it's a blend of self-paced and instructor-led session that allows a balance um for a full learning program. All right, uh Abimbola is saying. How can I have an accountability partner of this community? I think I answered that earlier. It's your choice. It's your decision. You know, engage people in the Slack channel. Once you're being added to the module one Slack channel, you already know these people are members of your class. Ask questions and, you know, you can pick it up um, from there. Is there a link to meet an accountability partner? No, there isn't a link. You would be on the same Slack channel. Okay. Okay, Nsika says, can the slides be shared to us after the class? Unfortunately, we are not sharing the slides, which is why we advise everyone to be part of this. But not to worry, everything we've said will be reinforced as you keep growing, you know, in the program, right? So everything we said, we will reinforce it. We would state it again and again. Um, you would see, you hear more of it. So don't worry. Uh, we won't share the slides, however. It's um property of Sil Academy and that cannot be shared um publicly. It's strictly for those who attended um the session. Um okay. Do we have any question? Any other questions? All right, I am not seeing any question here on my end anymore. I believe it has been an interesting session for. Okay, someone says, uh, is everyone automatically enrolled or is there going to be a system of selection? Well, the major system of selection is attending, um, at least for model one, you have to have attended the induction, not just attend one session and say, oh, attended, I just visited them. Like I said, when you, um, what's the word? When you join this platform, I can see, you know, we the system allows us to even see what time you join, what time you leave and everything. So, all those data will be you know put together allowing us to um you know compile the list but attend just attend the induction and you're good to go will there be when would the program get underway officially i would say your program has officially started you might think oh this conversations oh, not started training jerry we've not started anything but i assure you everything you're hearing the, during this induction will be very essential as you go through um the program so I would say the program has officially started. It started Monday yesterday officially, right? It just has, we just have different parts of it. So we have the induction week first, then module one, module two, up until module eight, and of course your graduation. So um, the program has officially started. I'll say that already. So do not feel like it hasn't started yet. Let me come back when it starts. 
it has started. How do I get on Slack? You should have gotten an email to join the Slack channel as at yesterday um, or, you know, when you were registering. Check all the email trends you've gotten. You would have seen join the Slack community. Click on that button and then you join the Slack channel. Check all the email trends you've gotten. There's definitely a Slack invitation there waiting for you. Good day. Are we expected to join every day for the induction? Okay, yes, you're expected to join every day for the induction. And for your friend that has not been able to log in via the website, unfortunately, registrations for this cohort is now closed. So they cannot commence cohort six again. Cohort six registrations are closed as we began yesterday. So we cannot take in any more persons. Um, the person will have to wait for cohort seven. Yes, we're both well, you are expected to attend both the morning and afternoon sections. For those that attended yesterday, you know that the sessions are different. It's not a repetition, it's not optional, they are very different. This afternoon, we will be taking you through data engineering 10,000 feet, like we did cloud engineering yesterday, and also we'll be having um a training from uh an AWS instructor led speaker coming in. So there's so many things packaged um for you at different sections. So please ensure that you attend both sections it's important must you attend morning and afternoons be inducted yes it's advised you attend both to be inducted to get into the program um if you have an accountability partner who was active and has changed attitudes you okay to change them the moment you realize they're slowing you down uh miracle i think for your accountability partner if the person is changing attitude is first my own advice is first try to you know understand what's happening with the person and if the person, you know, if you guys are not uh, working together properly, um, again, yes, it's, you can change them because you still have to achieve your goal. Okay, um, I think I've answered most of this question. Okay. Um, how do we get the course? What if I can't join the afternoon section? I advise you to try to join. How long is the learning phase takes in total? Right, much if you're around yesterday, you would have heard that this program is six months um, it's a six month training program. Um, thank you, Lumi Day, for the feedback. Are we going to be picked randomly? No, you're not going to be picked randomly. Like I said, the criteria is very simple and clear. Okay, there will be no recording for yesterday's class or any other session. So if you're just joining, I advise you to keep coming, you know, to attend everything. And hopefully, you know, you get to be part of the recap session that runs through. Um, as much as possible. Every session you miss, it's important that you're a part of it. Okay, for those of us who are cloud engineers, do we have to attend the data engineering section? Yes, it's important to attend data engineering session. I believe you'll benefit from it. It allows you to understand what data engineers do. And also, like I said, that's not the only session. At least you came in yesterday, you realized that it wasn't just the data engineering section that we had, um, cloud engineering section that we had. So please attend all the sections. They are compulsory. All right. Um, Thank you very much. Those of us asking, um, Maxwell says, I didn't get a Slack channel invitation. Not to worry. Uh, at the end of today's section, an email will be sent out again so you can join the Slack community. Uh, for those of us that are not part of the Slack channel, but please, it's important to join all the sections. No section is um, optional for you. And yes, what are the criteria? Criteria are simple. Be a part of the induction. Get everything you need to get and you will be onboarded. All right, not to take any more of our time. We want to always, you know, keep the time because we understand, Um, you know, everyone has all the things you're juggling. Uh, this has been an interesting and engaging section. Would have loved to answer all your questions. Yes, if you missed just this session, you still have a chance. So, Fisayo, just keep joining all the sessions. You know, you joined this morning, join the rest of the session to get you into the system. So you missed yesterday and you're worried, not to worry, just keep joining, keep joining the session. And um, as long as you're able to join all the sessions, you know, we will um, be able to admit you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining today's section. It was a good and engaging session. Please do not come. Um, let's try to, you know, join quite early to attend the afternoon section for today. Like I said, we have power packed. Um, event coming up this afternoon you know get to see about data engineering of course um the senior aws technical instructor will be here to talk to us about um, some of the things we need to know if i were you i will not just be i'll have a backup system in case there's a network issue because it's going to be a very very engaging session thank you to our speakers this morning the talent management team tosin and timmy and thank you Liu, for um an engaging session 
Thank you, everyone. Do have a great morning. Bye.